Are you ready for the epicness of Gearless Joe versus Legless Aragaki? Because it's gonna be freaking awesome. <laughs> I absolutely loved and hated this episode of Megalobox. I hated it for superficial reasons because we didn't actually get to see the fight between Joe and Aragaki until like the last couple minutes and it all ends in like a big cliffhanger knockout ending on the count of nine and ugh, I just cannot wait to see if Joe's actually going to get out of this one. I mean, right at nine, he looks so completely knocked out. Is he really going to be able to beat this guy? That being said, me saying that I hated it, it, it it's superficial. It's going to have no effect on the score. This was, again, a, another great episode of Megalobox. Uh, I loved the story of the former student of Nambu, who goes by the name of Aragaki. I had a feeling that he was going to be a former student. What I didn't know is that he was also going to be a war veteran who lost his legs and holds an extreme grudge against his Megaloboxing trainer. And this also goes back to Nambu and his past and how he seemed to have it all together a couple of years ago. But once this event happened, it was just the beginning of his downward spiral into the underworld greasy armpit of the world. And now he finally has a chance to claw himself out. And what does he run into but his former student who absolutely hates his guts. It's pretty heavy stuff, but I really love it. This character of Aragaki, too, is fascinating in that he wants to get back at his former trainer by defeating his brand new student, and not just defeating him, but utterly destroying him. Those are his words, and he holds this grudge because of all the damage that he sustained. Earlier in Aragaki's life, he was actually an up-and-coming megalo boxer, but he was uh, drafted into some sort of conflict and some war where he went into this building, found a bomb, and had his legs completely blown off Lieutenant Dan style. And after that, he was sort of classified as dead, missing in action. No one really knew what happened to him, and when Nambu figures this out, he just has a complete mental breakdown and shuts down completely and doesn't even try to contact him, which admittedly is kind of strange, but this moment clearly broke him down in a way that he's never been broken before. At least that's the way that it's portrayed in this episode right here. The thing is, since he doesn't try to make contact with him, when we actually find out that he is alive, uh, basically he feels like he's been abandoned. Aragaki wants revenge against this guy, so he basically gets a brand new pair of prosthetic robot legs, super-powered gear arms, and goes back to boxing and knocking the crap out of people and doing it in a very brutal fashion, which is something that he wants to use against Joe. Not because he has anything against him, but because he wants to get back at Nambu. And a lot of this episode comes from the drama and backstory of these two characters, who are complete and utter broken souls. And something about it is like just being sucked into a vacuum of pure entertainment. It just works. And this episode goes into some extreme dark territory. Not only are the war scenes very graphic, but we actually get to see like what happened to Aragaki after he came back and tried to have some semblance of a normal life. He was driven to the point of madness. He was drinking his pain away. He even put a gun in his mouth in what might be one of the most disturbing, almost suicide scenes that I've actually ever seen. The minute he breaks down and realizes that his life means nothing anymore, but it was also the moment that he became a boxer. And man, I cannot wait to see the conflict between these two characters and how it's all going to go down. They started up at the end of the episode, and at first it looks like Joe is able to keep up with him, but before you know it, he just gets completely smacked and gets knocked out, dead on the mat, and then the count starts going, it cuts to black, and the last thing you hear is nine. Just... <sighs> so what's the rundown on this episode of Megalobox? Man, just... Ah, I loved this episode so much. Um, it was such a great cliffhanger ending, too. Um, very typical of the series... Uh, to do something like this, and at first I was ready to hate the episode, because it's just, man, I just want to get to the freaking fight, but, man, I care so much more about actually what's going to happen in this fight for the way that they actually built up the character of Aragaki. The way the episode opened, too, was very shocking. It almost seemed like I was watching a completely different anime, because it opened up with the whole flashback sequence of Aragaki uh, in the war and going to this building and getting hit with this massive bomb. 
Um, and that's when I put the pieces together. I was like, yep, that's the guy with the big gnarly scar on his face. And uh, we get to learn about him and Nambu's past. And it just, it works. And it also gives an explanation for why Nambu is uh, so just dismissive of people and how he's so distrustful. He doesn't want to lose anyone again. He doesn't want to go through that pain. It completely broke him and is what has turned him into the freaking sordid pig that he is in the current part of the series. His past is literally coming back to haunt him, and it could ultimately kill him. That's what's so crazy about this scene. It could cause Joe to lose, which would cause the friggin' Mafia to end up turning him into Nambu Sausage. It's just crazy stuff, and it adds a lot of fantastic tension to what is otherwise just a fight where Joe fights against a giant guy who's high-ranking. They've added a really nice emotional thing to this, and the stakes are higher than they've ever been. Man, I just really hope Joe's going to get up. I mean, I don't think this is going to be the end of the character. I mean, if he loses, it's kind of done, right? So he has to kind of keep going. Either that or he's definitely going to lose rank big time. I don't know. Maybe this will be a learning experience for him, but I, I can't wait to see what's going to happen after this. Again, like the rest of the series, this episode was done with great style. Um, in fact, I don't talk about this enough, but this is the first episode where the intro is really starting to speak to me. Uh, I just, I really love the way it, it goes. Uh, the music, the imagery, everything just works, and it, it just pumps me up now. Every single time I see that intro, and, and it's just a great intro and a sea of amazing intros this season. Uh, so yeah, I really do appreciate it, but unlike a lot of the other bigger, faster, flashier ones, this one really took its time to, uh, to get its teeth into me, if you know what I mean. Uh, but really... Uh, this was another fantastic episode. Uh, the dynamic between Joe, Nambu, and uh, Sachio still really works. I like that Sachio is still a really good character who's a kid character who's not annoying. He actually contributes in every single way. I really do enjoy that. Um, but man, everything right here is just like this big emotional roller coaster and manly as hell. I just can't wait to see the rest of this conflict. Uh, so yeah, I loved this episode. It's a 5 out of 5. Um, I, I can't stress this enough. Megalobox is one of the best anime series this season and you definitely need to check it out. So there it is. That's my thoughts on the episode. I want to hear yours, though. Make sure to tell me what you thought about this episode of Megalobox in the comments section below. What did you think about the drama of this episode? And what do you hope to see from the rest of the fight between Gearless Joe and Aragaki? Thank you guys for watching this review. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, stay down, baby. Yeah.